Hey guys, how how are you? Uh, okay, so we're here today to um, talk about the, the very important part of uh, the application process, which is the letters of recommendation. Um, basically, what we're going to talk about today is why. Why do we need uh, letters of recommendation? Who your recommender should be? We're going to also focus on, okay, what should I do when I ask for a letter of application, uh, of uh, a letter of recommendation, and um, the important elements that a good recommendation, a recommendation letter should have. Um, so why are recommendation letters important? Uh, as we have been, you know, covering uh, in all our sessions, uh, you know, the application process to universities in the U.S. is a holistic process. That means that, you know, they're going to evaluate you as a, as a whole person, right? It's not just your grades. It's not just your SAT scores. It's everything. They want to know who you are as a person and how you're going to contribute to the community of the college that you're going to go. Um, so one of the things that you know, one of the purposes of uh, recommendation letters is that, is to offer a more comprehensive understanding of who you are as a student, as a person, and provide a perspective beyond your grades, the test scores, right? And, and, and this will allow colleges to see other qualities that may not uh, surface through other sections in your application. Um, of course, uh, the, the recommendation letter will serve the purpose of validating your, uh, your qualifications, right? A strong recommendation will act as a supporting evidence uh, that will uh, showcase, showcase your abilities, your work ethic, your potential for success in college as an international student, right? Um, it will also, of course, provide an insight from uh, an expert's point of view, right? Uh, your, your teacher, the person who is going to act as a recommender, is an expert in the field, right? Uh, and that will, you know, the expertise that the, 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 your teacher, your professor has, will add this credibility to your, uh, you know, to your evaluation of your abilities and, and, and your potential. And it will also provide, you know, unique insights um, regarding who you are, right? Uh, this is the moment where you'll, you'll be able to, you know, your teacher will be able to focus on very specific things about yourself that otherwise will not be able, you won't be able, you would not be able to show through other sections in the application and of course with uniqueness comes context right uh it's a great way to show the context that otherwise would not you would not be able to provide for example your academic background the school environment any personal circumstances or hardships that you may have had all that can be provided through a letter of, of recommendation. And uh, of course, it will, you know, add this differentiating factor, right? Uh, a a well-written recommendation letter will also make you stand out, you know? Uh, you are going to be in an application pool, a very competitive application pool of with other students, right? And a well-crafted recommendation letter will serve as a differentiating factor that will set you apart from other students, right? Um, through, you know, this very specific information that the, your teachers will be providing, okay? So, that's in a nutshell why you should dedicate time to, uh, you know, getting good letters of recommendation. How many of them? Well, we have been discussing this already, but um, you will need at least two. Uh, we always recommend uh, having more, you know, asking for more uh, recommendation letters. I'll, I'll talk about this in a second. Okay, so who? 
do I, do I ask for a recommendation letter? Uh, I mean, what's what's the, 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 the best person to go to? Is it somebody who has a very important, uh, you know, a position at school or who who should it be should it be the headmaster uh who uh so what we always recommend is choosing uh, a teacher a professor that knows you very well somebody you've worked with somebody who can give detailed information about your uh your process as a student uh uh you know your 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 growth as a person and as a student and who can give very concrete examples about that. Um, they should be able to speak about your academic abilities, your personal qualities, your achievements. If you're thinking of somebody who doesn't know you, you know, sometimes we have those teachers who are might be very important, but you know, we get the feeling that they kind of don't even know our names. That's not the person who you should go to, right? It should be somebody who really knows you, you know, and who you have kind of a relationship with as well. Um, so first suggestion is for you to choose teachers at school. Uh, and we generally suggest a teacher from, you know, the social sciences and a teacher from the hard sciences so that they can showcase different abilities, uh, abilities that are going to be important uh, in, in college, right? Um, then if you have counselors, mentors, other teachers, right, uh, from different contexts like English teachers or teachers from, um, you know, a different, uh, you know, uh, course, different kinds of courses, uh, you can add those. We generally recommend adding, adding those, but for the optional letters and not for the, like the two uh, mandatory letters. Okay. So, uh, and always, um, you know, consider asking for more letters than you need. So, because then you're going to uh, be able to choose and uh, I'll talk about that in a second as well. So how do I uh, how do I ask for a recommendation? How do how should I go about asking for a recommendation? Um, so first thing you need to know, which is not in my presentation, but I which I just just remember is that you know in the states what students do is um, you know they request a letter of recommendation. The, the through generally it's through common app we're going to see common app in a different session right but generally it's through common app but you request the teacher uh, to to write a recommendation letter and they write a recommendation letter and they submit it themselves right the issue in our country is that I mean we need to translate those letters and generally our teachers do not know uh, English so we have to translate them for them so we will uh, we will end up seeing reading the letter that we shouldn't read right but you know this is a necessary step for us because otherwise you know um, we won't have a recommendation letter unless our teachers are proficient in English right and we cannot only ask our English teachers to write the letter so there you go so how to ask for a letter of recommendation? So of course, um, request re uh, re rec letters as soon as possible. You know, uh, March, April, May, June, July are the best moments to request uh, letters of recommendation. I would say June, don't wait till July because so then you have the, 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 the winter break. So the sooner the better really. Um, sometimes we get this question a lot. Oh, Carolina, I'm still, you know, you know, my teacher is getting to know me still. And, uh, you know, I, but I would really like him to, to write me this letter of recommendation. And my situation, my answer to that situation is okay. Go for that letter of recommendation and wait a little bit more. Right. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's crucial that you keep asking for other letters of recommendation now, just in case. Okay, so request letters early. Remember that your teachers are busy people and that they are doing this in their free time. Okay, um, so of course, 
you will have to do the extra work of explaining the process to the teacher. Uh, many teachers are not familiar with the process of applying to universities in the US and it's necessary that you provide the necessary context so that they know what they are doing. Okay, some teachers are very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about the process, some of the teachers are not. So uh, never take for granted that they know what they should be doing. You, sh you are in charge of offering that context for them. And the same goes for uh, you know, providing all the relevant information that you want them to include, or maybe, you know, highlighting personal anecdotes or info you want them to include uh, so that, you know, they 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 start the, the, the task of writing the letter of recommendation with enough information, you know, about what they are doing, what your priorities are, you know, uh, what 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 you you know, what you want them to highlight, but there's a, a, a thin line between, you know, telling them what to do and then suffocating their uh, uh, creativity. So give them space as well, because sometimes when we give space to teachers, they they write things that we never thought that they would, you know. Uh, and, and sometimes we, you know, I include myself, I've been a teacher and I had to write letters of recommendation for students. And uh, with some students, there came a point when I was like, look, why don't you write the letter of recommendation and, and I signed it, right? Because it was like, no, but include these and these and that. And I wanted to, you know, kind of show a different perspective of the student. Uh, good, right? A good perspective, not to repeat all the information, but he didn't want me to do that. So I was like, look, just write the letter of recommendation and I'll sign for it. Don't, don't reach that point with teachers. Let them write, okay? Um, and then, of course, once once you're done with that, you know, once they write the letter for you, always, you know, express their gratitude, you know, follow up with them, let them know how your process is going. They will have to upload the letter for you once you um, once you translate it. So it's you, you have to keep the conversation going and let them know what you've been up to. OK. Uh, and yeah, uh, always be grateful for, for the, the time. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, so hmm. uh, write uh, a good recommendation letter. So what I'm going to give you here is, uh, you know, some, some suggestions of elements that should be included in recommendation letter in recommendation letters, of course, you don't need to ask your teacher to just like, oh, include all these elements because otherwise the letter will be incomplete. No, uh, it's not that you should be doing that. But generally, what we have seen as good recommendation letters have had these elements, okay? And uh, we'll be sharing um, real life models of, uh, not models, real life letters of recommendation that have been successful. But here, as I explained, you'll be having examples of what what I'm, uh, of what I'm explaining so that you can have an illustration of, uh, uh, of what you're supposed to do or, 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 or what, what our suggestion is. Okay, so first element is context, okay? Uh, your, your teacher should begin the letter by stating the relationship with, uh, with you, you know, how long has he or she known you, uh, you know, how long has that interaction, uh, you know, been, uh, they should name the, 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 the subject or classes he or she has taught you and, uh, you know, the kind of relationship you have had, right? Uh, and and the kind of uh, the kind of work you've been doing together, if any, right? Generally, to those who can, you know, talk about that. Um, so, uh, as you see in the in the example, okay, you can pause the video and then read the the, the examples at at your own pace. Uh, so it's important to set the context, right? But it's generally context about you and the relationship with the professor. Do not let your professors go on and on and on and on and on about their curriculum. Sometimes they tend to do that here in Argentina. I've seen many letters like that. 
you know, they spend a whole paragraph, you know, describing their curriculum because they want to see, they want to show that they, you know, are, uh, you know, uh, they have expertise in the field and that they are good people to judge your, uh, your, uh, you know, performance, right? But a couple of lines are okay, right? Maybe how long have they been, they have been uh, working at the school. That's a good uh, piece of information, right? Or, um, you know, um, you know, if they work in college as well, that might be a good piece of information, but they, don't let your teachers go on and on about their curriculum, just context, okay? Um, then uh, the letter of recommendation will, is never complete if they are not specific examples, okay? Um, Teachers should include specific instances or projects, so yes, where you showcase exceptional skills, character traits, academic achievements. The idea is that, you know, whatever they are saying should be supported by a specific example. Because specific examples, what they do is add credibility, they add depth to the recommendation. Here, you know, you can see in this example, yes, Sarah is, uh, Sarah, this, uh, Sarah girl, right? Uh, well, the teacher is saying that she has uh, an insightful analysis of complex literary devices and that she can craft beautifully written poems. But then she goes on to, you know, to, to give, provide a specific instance where, you know, Sarah wrote a very good piece that stood out, right? And you could, you know, even then show it, you know, the symphony of words poem. So these are the things that we say, you know, you know, when we always say, um, you know, show, don't tell, you know, it's, it's through these specific things that we see who you are and where you have stood out. Um, the third uh, element that I want to highlight is instances in which the professor highlights uh, intellectual curiosity, critical thinking skills, you know, uh, all these instances in which you have shown, you know, eagerness to learn, your ability to think critically, um, you know, the, the curiosity in you that goes beyond the classroom. It's not just, oh yeah, in class he made or she made very good questions. It's like, it's going beyond that because those are the skills that you need as an international student in the US, okay? So, um, so in this, in this example, it's okay. I, I would go beyond that. Like, so the teacher is saying, okay, Sarah's, you know, intellectual curiosity is remarkable. She often engaged in thoughtful discussions and uh, probing questions that demonstrated her desire to expand her knowledge. But maybe something even better might be, you know, she even went on to, you know, look for information somewhere, you know, she brought this, I don't know, documentary, which then we use for, you know, as a trigger for a debate, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So this is good. I mean, there's still room for improvement, right? Uh, in showing, you know, curiosity, intellectual curiosity, if we are trying to highlight that. Um, good. Um, then, um, as we mentioned, every time that we discuss applying to universities in the US, leadership qualities are not essential, but they are encouraged, right? Uh, so that's why we have here if applicable, because not all of us are innate leaders, right? But leadership qualities, a go-getter attitude, you know, uh, a proactive attitude is always encouraged when you're an international student because there's a lot that you will need to do by yourself. So it's always good to, to, to have your teacher discuss instances where you displayed leadership skills, took initiative, or serve as a role model for, for your peers, okay? So as you can see in the example, 
you know, I would even go further and provide more specific instances, you know, like a specific project you had, specific role that you had, uh, or a specific situation in which you uh, showed, displayed, uh, you know, a, a, a leader, uh, leadership skills or um, qualities or, you know, in which your involvement was crucial in the development of something. Um, so, yeah. And okay, so, um, of course, uh, uh, an analysis of who you are will be completely incomplete. Uh, if uh, your professor did not uh, focus on your interpersonal skills and how you collaborate, right? How you are uh, uh, a team player. Uh, how do you, um, your ability to work, to collaborate with others, right? Um, there are certain um, abilities that, you know, it will be, uh, interesting to showcase, right, as your abilities to communicate effect effectively, uh, to contribute positively to group dynamics, how you, uh, what are generally your roles as a, as a student in groups, for example, remember that um, uh, there's a lot of collaboration going on in universities in the US and your ability to uh, work collaboratively in your, um, you know, what you contribute to uh, group work will be in, uh, important, right? So, uh, well, in this example, uh, the teacher is highlighting how Sarah possesses exceptional, exceptional inter, interpersonal skills, how respectful and inclusive she is when working as, as a, in a group, right? Uh, how she has abilities to actively listen, offer constructive feedback and find a common ground. So to this, I would also add some specific situation in which she did this, right? Maybe how through teamwork, um, you know, there was some kind of group work that they have to do. And then, you know, there was this problem, this situation, and she offered constructive feedback. And through her feedback, they will be, they were able as a group to come up with something better. I don't know, you know. So, um, those are the things that are going to provide more substance to what you're saying, okay? Uh, and of course, this kind of goes hand in hand with assessing character and uh, personal qualities, right? Because, yeah, how you collaborate with others says a lot about your personal qualities. But there are other personal qualities that can be, you know, displayed uh, there are other personal qualities that, that can be displayed that do not necessarily have to do with uh, um, group work, right? So it's a good idea if your teacher can, can focus a little bit more on your character traits, such as empathy, integrity, responsibility, perseverance, uh, you know, and how these qualities that you have, you know, how you are as a person contribute to the 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 good of 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 the school community as a whole uh, and the classroom as a whole. Um, so if you pause, you can read these two different uh, examples, one which has to do with, you know, facing uh, academic and personal challenges and doing things with unwavering determination. So that shows how, you know, Sarah was able to uh, go on with school despite difficulties, for example, resilience, demonstrating resilience, and the other one, which has to do with being respectful and uh, supportive and, um, you know, uh, being able to actively listen and, you know, going back to the, the, the example we were mentioning that um, she, she, was, she offered constructive feedback and, uh, you know, the teamwork that we mentioned before. Um, OK, 
Okay, and for um, this um, um, this slide uh, discussing extracurricular involvement, uh, you should be very careful, right? I mean, it's important that uh, we we take advantage of recommendation letters to yes to um, to mention your involvement in extracurricular activities, clubs, boards, community service, uh, but you know. To use this instance, not to already mention what has been mentioned or a list of, of, of extracurriculars that you have already mentioned, but to actually, you know, highlight things that you were not able to highlight or expand more on those things that you were not able to expand on, uh, you know, highlighting your dedication, highlighting the impact. Uh, the leadership roles you have, you know, how the, the, the community received your, you know, your involvement in those or how you grew as a person through your um, through your involvement in those extracurricular activities. But be very careful because sometimes teachers, you know, find themselves involved in like describing things that are uh, already mentioned in the in the application in your application and that's why you should be very careful in explaining the process to your teachers so that they don't make this mistake you know um, it's important that uh, we focus on that as well okay but this is a great space too you know sometimes there's one thing that we really you know where we did very 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 well right and uh, we really want to talk more about that so sometimes this is a good moment to do that you know by, by having somebody else you know show off for ourselves um, okay and 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 last but not least it's always important for for your teacher to you know round off your letter nicely with the last paragraph that shouldn't be super long that shouldn't be overly you know repetitive right but which will summarize the teacher's impression of you and which will reiterate you know your strengths your potential you know how the potential he or she sees in you uh and how you know uh she or he sees uh you uh as a successful student in an international setting right because don't forget that she or he is not only recommending you for college but also for for college as an international student. So, uh, and my point of view, I mean, uh, what I sometimes like to do is, uh, you know, uh, write sincere wishes. Like one of the, the phrases that I like saying is like, I, um, how is it that I say it? I word it. Um, Uh, something like along the lines of uh, and, and wish him not, nothing but the best in his or her future endeavors uh, something like that like when a, a teacher wishes you well it means something right but this is a that's a personal choice there are many 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 ways to to end a, a letter round off a letter nicely right so okay um, we have lots of uh, of successful letters that we would like you to to analyze so um we'll see you and we'll keep analyzing those together thank you for for um your attention and see you soon